Hey everybody, so uh, the last two weeks we have been at the Mount Rushmore KOA Resort in South Dakota. And if you don't know us, we uh, sold our house three years ago. We uh, full-time in our uh, camper that you can see behind us, a 40-foot fifth wheel. And uh, we move every two weeks. Um, we've been to numerous KOAs, probably 50 of them at least, and uh, at least four or five KOA resorts before. Um, so anyway, we've been here two weeks. And um, usually when we leave, we like to kind of post a little video of you know, what's been going on and what's the campground like and everything. So I'm just gonna run through it real quick um, to kind of give you guys um, some information. This is the site that we are in. Um, this is the front part of the KOA. So if I turn around, um, the entrance um, is over here. And then um, if I kind of do a quick turn around, there's a, there's a lake behind me, a little tiny baby lake for fishing. And then over here is the old pool. Um, and the water slide is like literally like right behind us, like right here, there's a little road with a water slide. Um, if you're wondering, you know, looking at the map, trying to figure out where are we at. Um, so this is the nicer part of the campground. And it, the first thing you'll notice if you look at our camper is it barely fits in the site. And if you look, there's a little Airstream, there's another little camper, there's another little camper, there's people parked, uh, you know, parallel to the road, another little camper. Um, yeah, the sites here, they're pretty small. Um, the sites that are way, way super up there right next to the um, entrance, those are a little bit bigger and you actually see people parked kind of a little more like normal. Um, the sites that are near the old pool, I'll kind of show you some pictures or something. Those sites over there um, are a little bit bigger also. So I wouldn't say all the sites in the entire campground are tiny. Um, but the look and feel that you see, kind of gravel, um, and you might see some discoloration on the gravel. It's because they run a water truck through here um, to keep the gravel wet so um, it doesn't become um, too dusty, so to speak. Um, you see like there's um, grass, there's not really any pads. The only um, pads that they have in this campground are going to be over in the, um, the patio area. Um, then the other thing is you might be kind of wondering about the site itself. The site is about $110, the site that we're in here. It's kind of pricey. It is priced up there um, like a uh, Margaritaville or like a Sun Outdoors, um, the, like the flagship one in Myrtle Beach, for instance. Um, and, um, you know, I'm going to give my honest truth here. Um, this. Um, and this is going to sound really, really super negative, and I don't like doing negative videos. Um, this resort, um, to me, feels like the largest KOA journey that I've ever been in. Um, the, and if you don't know what, what I'm saying, KOA is three levels of campgrounds. The journey is like the bottom. It's where you spend the night. The holiday is where you normally spend like a three-day weekend. And then the resort is typically designed to be like above that, like the top end. And this campground is enormous, yes. Um, but if you look at the amenities, you look at the execution, you look at the fit and finish, it, it doesn't feel resort level um, at all, like not even close. Um, and I'll just like, somebody might immediately kind of question me or whatever. I'm just going to throw out like a bunch of stuff that's going to sound super, super negative, super, super nit nitpicky. Um, and whatever, you can take it like for face value just to kind of give you um, information about this place. Um, the, the entrance of it is beautiful looking when you pull in, you're like, oh my God, this is so immaculate. Um, you know, they have all these little buildings and stuff. Um, they have horses here, so that's cool and everything. They do a chuck wagon and it looks really, really pretty from the road. Like, I mean, it, it looks so beautiful. But if you go down to the coffee shop in the morning, you find out that they only open at like 7.30, which that seems a little early for when you're on vacation, but that's actually kind of late um, for normal coffee shops. Um, but you go in there and you find out that there's only one person working there um, and it takes 45 minutes to get a cup of coffee. That's a little bit embarrassing. I've been there four times and all four times it took 45 minutes to um, get a cup of coffee. That's, that's sad. Um, she asked for help a couple times, um, different days. Um, somebody delivered some milk for her um, but, and then immediately left and didn't help really besides delivering milk. A um, manager showed up and didn't know how to take uh, orders. Um, that's a, a little si silly. Um, the general vibe that I get everywhere I go, I hear, whoa, whoa, the workers just started. This is the beginning of the year. And yeah, it is Memorial Day. They just opened like last week. As far as I know, this campground's been open for like 10 years. They should kind of have their shit together in my mind. Um, it shouldn't be that every year they have to act like they're a brand new KOA that doesn't know how to operate. Um, I'm, I'm just 
my mind is like literally like blown. Um, Rich went in, um, another person was camping here that had similar experiences, um, but in a different part of the campground. He went in just to get his like KOA number added to his account. There's just nobody at registration that knows how to do that. They had to call a manager over to show them the simple process of pushing a couple buttons and typing in a number. It's just so many little tiny itty bitty nitpicky things like that. Everywhere you look, um, it's it does not feel resort like. This is the only um, KOA that I can think of other than maybe the, the bare bottom ones that does zero delivery services. Zero, zero, zero at all. Um, I can go to the KOA in Denver, the, the um, holiday. I think it's a holiday, man, it might be a journey. Um, do I want firewood? They'll deliver it, not at this resort. Um, do I want pizza? Because they have pizza here, they have a pizza store. They don't deliver pizza like at this um, resort, right? Do I want ice cream? Well, they deliver ice cream, believe it or not. I've never heard of ice cream delivery. That's so cool that Denver delivers ice cream. Nope. Do I want firewood? Nope. They don't, they don't deliver that either. Um, when you pull on the site, you know, normally at most KOAs, the guy stops and like helps you back in, helps you line up, make sure you understand where the um, podium is, the pedestal for power and water, electric and all that kind of stuff. Nope, not here. They just pull you in and like as soon as you start to pull into the right side, they just gone. Um, and maybe it's a training issue. Maybe that's not the way that they're supposed to do it, but that's the way they did it with me. That's the way they did it with Rich. That's the way that like, it's just constant. Um, noise, the noise here is ridiculous. Um, and you might be, oh, it's a site you're in. That's part of it. Okay, yes, we are on an in-site and there is a semi that parks next to us about a foot from our camper every single morning to drop off stuff at this little restaurant next to us. So I can complain about that because I'm on an in-site. Um, however, that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is there's literally a side-by-side -side that drives by every five minutes of a KOA employee. And it's a different KOA employee. It's not just one person driving around in circles. They use these side-by-sides and electric golf carts and like pickup trucks and um, one tons and, and bobcats. Uh, and it's like non-stop and it's just even on like holiday weekends saturdays um they have no appreciation for uh noise it's just my my like my mind is like like blown um at almost any other resort that i've ever been to they use, normally use electric golf carts normally um not super super noisy non-freaking stop um, that, that's just how it is. Um, it, you know, and just to complain a little bit more about noise, you know, they're doing construction here. That's understandable. That's cool that like the campground is expanding, but the construction starts at 630 in the morning. I'm like, what the, like they have quiet hours, but the campground doesn't even observe their own quiet hours. Um, the, um, noise, let's just keep talking about noise since I'm complaining enough. Um, the maintenance on, on the grass, like I get you have to cut the grass and you have to do weed eaters and you have to have like bobcats and, and it takes a lot of work to do all that. This campground, for whatever reason, does most of their maintenance on Saturdays. Pff, mind blown. Never heard of that before. Um, usually like the way that most camp rates, campgrounds operate, um, at least the ones that, that we've been doing, we've been to a lot of them traveling for three years. Normally they, they mow all of the crap and make it all look super pretty on like Wednesday, Thursday. People check in, it looks beautiful. Saturday looks beautiful. People leave on Sunday and then they kind of loop back around. They start doing maintenance again, like during the week, but, but not, not, not here. It's like people just don't know because like I said, it's like training, education, not really sure. Anyway, let's kind of turn this around, get a little bit more positive again as much as I can. Um, they have two pools here, um, one in the old part of the campground that's like kind of over there. Um, tons of construction in that area, no heater um, on anything, super cold. Then they have a new pool that's like up next to the main resort. The new pool was open on, on uh, when they opened the, everything on Memorial Day. It has a heater, it's kind of cold, um, and the hot tub is just sort of lukewarm, maybe slightly above lukewarm and you know, you're gonna say, oh, it's Memorial Day, it's the beginning of the year. No, that's bullshit. Um, we, we were in Colorado at a couple KOAs. We were in uh, Utah in a couple of KOAs. This year already in the last like 60 days, they had super freaking hot hot tubs. Okay, like it's not like a season thing and I don't think that like you can really argue that um, South Dakota is colder than Colorado. Like that's, that's a, a difficult argument for me to um, comprehend. Um, so anyway, back to let's uh, let's be positive again. Um, they they do have some unique things here. They rent cars. They rent side by sides. They rent golf carts. Golf carts are like seventy bucks. It feels a little bit high. Maybe that that's normal. The side by sides are about four hundred bucks um, for like eight hours. 
uh, that's probably reasonable. Um, I'm not really a side by side. I don't take them out that often. We did, we did them. It was fun. It was cool. Um, and they have a little GPS thing. Then the cars, um, like they they actually like have car rental like Avis or whatever. But it's not Avis. It's like I think it's just the campground. The sign said that you got it for like 12 hours. You picked it up in the morning. You returned it in the evening. And the pricing was like 130 to 200 dollars a day. My mind is so blown over those prices. Um, <laughs> You can go to Avis at like almost any airport in the United States, you know, or Enterprise or name whatever company you want. It's like 40, 50 bucks a day for 24 hours. It's cool that they have the service here. It is really, really cool. The nearest Avis is probably like an hour away in like Rapid City is my guess. So they just have kind of maybe a monopoly going on. I, I don't know if there's like special insurance here. Um, but once again, kind of, I'm kind of getting negative again. I'm trying really, really, really not to be negative. Um, the KOA is enormous. They have different kinds of sights here. So the front, super, super flat, um, kind of like these nice 45 degree angles like you're expecting. Um, the old part of the campground back there um, is just like gravel and it's just like these little baby loops and I'll show you some like footage of that. They have primitive camping behind me. Um, then they have these sites that are up on this mountain behind me. Um, this place is so enormous. Um, the sites on the mountain up here, they're kind of angled all kind of weird. Um, it has like this um, state park kind of-esque um, wilderness camping kind of feel. Um, if, you, if you're into that kind of feeling, like primitive feeling, that's where you want to be. I personally would hate to be up there because it's a really, really steep hill and you know, I would always feel like I needed to drive my truck or rent a golf cart to get anywhere um, because it's so steep I wouldn't even want to bother with like trying to ride a bike up and down that hill because it's so steep. Um, but if you're into that, it's cool. They have cabins every freaking where. The cabins are different sizes, different amenities. Um, these cabins right behind me that you can barely see, these are some of the bigger cabins. Um, then they have smaller cabins. The smaller cabins, they look a little um, sparse to me. They no air conditioner, it looks like no heater. Um, two small windows. I don't even think they have a cooktop or anything in them. It's like basically a tent slash um, with hard walls, another KOA guy. They, like I said, they are just always um, going by. Let's see how long this guy stays um, in the site or if he's going to help him. Yeah. I didn't even time this. I didn't time this at all. Like, that's it. That's the assistance that you get into the site. I mean, normally, I mean, if you're super, super experienced, that's awesome. That's not really like a resort feeling. There he goes. Yeah, I just, just magic, just magically happens. Um, every single one here, um, just that's, that's how it is. Um, gigantic KOA journey, um, gotta love it. Um, so anyway, um, hopefully this helps you out with picking the um, location. It is, um, and there's like another KOA vehicle, like they're just nonstop. So anyway, um, very, very close to Mount Rushmore. Um, I think that this right here might be the back of Mount Rushmore. If it's not, it's like very close. It's like 10 minutes from Mount Rushmore. It's near Hill City. It's near Keystone. We'll do another video on like the things that we did in the area because like I can do a whole video on, on just that. We did so much stuff. Um, there, I, I did not mention the water slide that is behind me. I'll show some like footage of the water slide. Um, every single kid that went down that water slide that I've seen, we've been here two weeks, did not go in the water. And what I mean is they got the little mat, they go slowly down the slide, and when they get to the bottom, they stop and they crawl out of it. Like, I don't know if the water's really cold or if it's like they think it's nasty looking or if they don't want to get in the water, I, but it just seems like they want to go down the slide, but they don't want to get wet. Um, kind of kind of weird. Um, restaurants, I did not mention the restaurants at all, and I do want to touch on that really, really quickly. Um, we went to the, to, to the restaurant that is awkwardly positioned. It, they have no... Um, they have no type of restaurant next to any pool. It's kind of like 500 feet from the pool, but there's zero concession near the pool, which is also really, really odd. Um, I think that they should look at Moab or somebody and see how that KOA operates um, because like much, much um, higher end to me, even though the KOA um, in Moab is only a holiday and the one here is a resort. Um, but anyway, if you if you just, they don't have concession near the pool, then the restaurant is nasty. Um, I'll just put it like that as the food was like almost un uneditable. The bar was good. They had a bar. It was adult only. I liked the bar. Uh, it was tiny. The restaurant was tiny. Um, but food, mm, no. no, no, not at all. Um, and they only have like six tables inside, maybe six tables outside. So how do they accommodate everybody? Um, pretty simple um, fix. They just build a big tent and then you can come get breakfast in the big giant tent. Um, unfortunately, they kind of have like the lowest end cooks in that, that tent. Um, it's like teenagers basically like cooking 
and uh, um, it's, it's not like resort like level food in my mind um, it's somebody trying to learn how to cook pancakes um, that they give you <laughs> um, like my pancakes were half done and I didn't even really feel like um, eating them um, because they're so bad but I see the place is packed all the freaking time but once again um, it has a, the feel of a gigantic KOA journey not the feel of like of a resort I'm, I'm sorry sorry really really super negative not meaning to um, but just really really trying to help you guys out so anyway we're I'm done when I'm done talking um, hopefully I, I covered everything if there's a question just put it in the bottom I'll type in whatever you want to know about this place we are here for two weeks um, and yeah that's it